Okay, so today's video is the sixth in our series that we've entitled Huge Options Trading Blunders. We've decided to produce this series for traders who are really serious about trading options for a living and badly want to succeed, but they keep getting sidetracked by chasing trades and ideas with huge flaws in them instead of taking the proper steps to excel as an options trader. I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk, and I can tell you from many years of experience that I've seen every one of the mistakes that we're going to be describing in these videos. In fact, I made some of these very mistakes when I first got started trading. They're real, and if you're serious about trading for a living, you really need to pay close attention to these videos so that you can avoid serious problems and unnecessary detours in your trading journey. So if you're committed to trading full-time as an options trader, then I urge you to watch this video and the rest of the videos in this series so that you don't fall by the wayside like so many aspiring traders who don't want to spend the time to learn the actual truth about the rewards and challenges of options trading and the skills you'll need to truly succeed. We want you to take a realistic path to your trading goals, which are attainable if you're serious and willing to put in the work to succeed. Hi, I'm Seth Freuberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now, I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so. Today we're going to be looking at options trading blunder number six in our series on options misconceptions and huge mistakes that you can make in your journey towards becoming a full-time options trader. So blunder number six, like many of the other blunders we've explained in this series, arises out of the very common human tendency to compare your recent performance to other traders and become envious if they've had recent success while you've had recent failure. Does this sound familiar? It happens to just about everybody, and thinking that way can lead to some very foolish decisions. So most of you probably don't realize this, but for many years I was the CEO of a property and casualty insurance company that had over 200 employees. And when you run a company of that size, one skill you definitely need is to have an ability to identify talent you end up reading a lot of resumes, tons of them, and in order to stay sane through that process, you need to have some way to eliminate candidates from the competition for a top job just to narrow your choices down to a reasonable number of people to interview. So one rule that I had, and I know this sounds tough, but the rule was that anyone who had more than three jobs in the last 10 years was eliminated from the running. So what was my purpose behind this guideline? Well, it's simple logic, really. You see. Most people who have success in their careers tend to establish strong relationships with peers and managers. They're valued employees and their managers see their value and so they do a lot to retain them as employees such as promoting them, giving them nice salary bumps, giving them specialized kinds of training, and anything else they can think of to keep the employee happy. As a result, the employees tend to stay at the same company for a lengthy period of time. Well, that's the kind of person you'd want working for you, right? Whereas on the other hand, job hoppers were people who tended to be incapable of establishing strong ties with others and they were always disgruntled. Typically, I found that they were not particularly good or reliable performers. Their managers didn't particularly value them, nor did they do anything special to retain them. Consequently, they began to look for other jobs before they got fired because they sensed their managers didn't value them or preemptively quit because they were pretty sure they were about to be fired. And this pattern would continue from job to job. They'd perform poorly, they'd complain and were disgruntled because they didn't get the respect that they thought they deserved, even though in most cases they didn't really particularly deserve it. And they would end up quitting on the brink of being fired or they would quit out of a sense that the grass would always be greener on the other side, which it never was, of course. But most importantly, earlier in my career, before I put this rule into place, I noticed that any time that I hired a job hopper type, that they would inevitably quit working for us in, predictably, about two or three years until I caught onto this pattern. 
Why did I think that we were such a great company that a person with this pattern was magically going to snap out of his pattern and suddenly change and become a valued contributor to the team when that was not his or her history at all? And the truth is that there is no logical reason to believe that. And inevitably, the job hopper would hop on to another job. And as far as I could tell, the pattern would never change as I followed their careers from a distance as they continued to hop from job to job. So you're probably wondering what all of this has to do with trading. And the answer is that over my options trading career, I found that there are certain traders that I would call strategy hoppers. The pattern with these kinds of traders is that they establish a bread and butter strategy for themselves that they trade on a continuous basis for some time and experience success with it. And then they run into a rough patch where the strategy loses two or three months in a row. So what they start doing is listening to other traders who are chattering about the newest, shiniest strategy, what I call the strategic flavor of the month. And believe me, there's always a new flavor of the month strategy. I've watched this develop my entire trading career. And so what happens is that some new strategy that has experienced recent success is catching on. And a lot of people doing that exact same strategy are naturally all having success and therefore are all bragging in unison about how great this strategy is. And so the guys trading the strategy, which happen to perform poorly, are watching these guys brag. And instead of viewing the situation maturely, they get envious. And then they fall into options blunder number six, which states, I'm switching to the option strategy that is crushing it for everyone else because mine lost money for two months in a row. And so they drop their current option strategy like a hot potato and rush to start trading the one that's making everyone else rich. Now, before we explain in vivid detail why option strategy hoppers always fail, I wanted to let you know that there really are sound, viable, long-term techniques for trading options for income. And in fact, we're currently running a two-hour free intensive workshop at the moment where we'll be teaching you three of those strategies that real professional options traders use, including a really simple but incredibly effective technique that some of the greatest investors in the world like Warren Buffett use all the time, plus an options trading strategy that has a statistical 80% probability of profit month in and month out, plus an option strategy that you can employ with a stock that you like where you'll make your target profit whether the stock goes up, goes nowhere, or even goes down a small percentage. So, if those strategies would be of interest to you, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. Or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It's a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. Okay, so what is the fallacy of strategy hopping that traps so many traders that fall into this options trading blunder? Well, let's think about it. You see, anyone who's serious about options income trading will rigorously backtest any strategy that they're considering trading, whether they've designed it themselves or they've learned it from someone else. And they will invariably find that there are periods when that particular trading style is hitting the ball out of the park and other periods where it loses money. And incidentally, it is often the worst periods of time for a strategy that are followed by its best periods. But that's a discussion for another day. In any event, there's no way around the cyclical nature of options income strategies. No strategy works in every market environment. I don't care how well designed it is. Every strategy has market situations which will cause it to lose money. It's a simple as that. And if you're not prepared to believe that you will go through periods where your otherwise totally sound strategy doesn't make money, then do yourself a favor and quit trading right now because you're never going to find a strategy that won't have such periods. And the irony is that your back tests will undoubtedly reveal those weak periods and you will, in a simulated way anyway, experience those down periods. But because it's not real money and it's just a simulation you'll take those losing periods in stride if, at the end of the back test, you realize that the strategy, in fact, yielded a solid return over a sustained period of time. If you find an approach like that, any logical trader will start incorporating that strategy into his trading practice 
going in with his eyes wide open, recognizing that the strategy will go through its ups and downs just as it did in backtest. But after all said and done, at the end of the day, the strategy provides a solid outcome. Okay, so here's a real world ex example of exactly what I'm talking about. And this comes from a strict backtest of two of the strategies that we track and for which we've actually produced video courses. So the first one on the left, that's known as the bearish butterfly. And in 2013, the strategy did very poorly. It basically just broke even at less than a 1% return. During that year, another options strategy known as the bull knocked it out of the park and actually made over 60% that year, an incredibly successful year. So the inexperienced bearish butterfly traders probably think to himself, hey, look at those guys over there trading the bull. They made 61.6% and I'm over here trading the bearish butterfly and I barely broke even. So my mama didn't raise no fool, I'm switching to the bull. And so the next year in 2014, as, and as you probably could have predicted, if you were thinking this through, sure enough, the bearish butterfly has an insanely good year, as it often does, with a return of 146%, while the bull has a nice year, returning 26.8%, but nothing like the grand slam home run of the bearish butterfly that year. And almost as though the market was trying to rub it in your face, the next year, the bearish butterfly again went into triple digits at 107.6, while the bull ran down to single digits at 8.6%. And finally, to make matters worse, and mind you, this was totally predictable. Had you simply stuck to either one over the three-year period, you would have fared much better. And while the bearish butterfly strategy that you dropped early on performed much better than the bull, as you can see, either of the two strategies performed way better than the trade hopper. Successful traders ride out those difficult periods like the bearish butterfly trader experienced in 2013 because they're secure in the knowledge that these difficult times are inevitable, but they don't last, and instead the strategy should return back to its historical return rates. Whereas strategy hoppers defeat themselves by abandoning the knowledge that they picked up through their back tests and bail out on the strategies just as soon as they've had a short, unsuccessful period of time. They back tested it, yet they completely forget that a period of losses is just as predictable as a string of wins. But because they're not mature traders, they basically can't handle that they actually lost real money trading the strategy, even though intellectually that was a fully expected chain of events and their back test in fact had such periods. Yet they still decided to trade the strategy with live capital because it was so compelling. Instead, they got despondent about the strategy prematurely and instead they go and fall in love with a shiny new strategy that everyone's bragging about because it happened to go through one of its strong periods while yours was going through one of its completely predictable weak periods. If you talk to anyone who has strategy hopped before, there's a very good chance that they will tell you that the minute they switched over to the new strategy, that very same shiny new strategy started to lose money and lo and behold, the strategy they abandoned suddenly starts working again. The truth is that the strategy never stopped working in the first place. It just went into a predictable down period followed by a predictable up period and the new strategy that the trader hopped to had gone into an equally predictable down period. Now this is not to say that if other traders over a long period of time are experiencing sustained success, I'm not saying it's a bad idea to take notes and to strive to understand why they're so successful over a long period of time and possibly incorporate some of their ideas into your trading. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, that's a very positive practice. But what I'm saying is that if an options trader has experienced a few recent successes while you've experienced a few recent failures, that's simply not enough data to reach any conclusions at all, let alone a drastic decision to completely switch your bread and butter strategy to some other strategy because some guys are over there high-fiving each other about some recent wins using that strategy. Rather, so long as the market has not on undergone some fundamental change that may have actually rendered your strategy ineffective, and that does occasionally happen, as long as that is not the case, then trade hopping simply doesn't work. I would say that most of the time when you trade hop, the strategy that you hopped away from starts performing better than the one you hopped to. It's just the way it is. 
It's the way it seems to work out. Ask any experienced trader. You don't have to take my word for it. So don't fall into options trading blunder number six. Instead, behave like a mature, experienced trader and abide by the back test that led you to incorporate this strategy into your trading practice in the first place. That's the way professional traders think and conduct themselves. Now, just to remind you, as I said earlier, if you enjoyed this video and learned something valuable from it, would like to learn the details of three real-world option strategies that professional options traders use all the time, then you should check out the free options class that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free registration page in a new window so you won't lose this video. Don't worry. Or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free intensive workshop. It really is a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now and don't miss it. And please don't forget to click on the subscribe button right now so you won't miss the next episode of Huge Options Trading Blunders and all the other free trading videos that we're posting constantly on our channel to help you to improve your game as an options trader.